So I finally got a new camera and, or I should say, but this is not it yet. All right, what's up, Aquatic Bob Squad? How's it going tonight? Well, you might be watching this in the morning, but uh, I'm happy. I got a new camera. So like I said in the intro, this isn't it yet. This is still my cell phone. I'm trying to do one last epic video with my cell phone. And I wanna do like a before and after comparison. And I'm super excited about it. So, the camera that I got is the Sony A7R II. And I'm debating possibly still trading it back in and getting the Sony A7 III, which is lower megapixels, but overall it's got a way better processor, uh, image quality, uh, autofocus points and the video shoots a lot better too so i'm i'm really debating it i got a few days left to decide but either way i want to do a really cool video here blues are turned up i know i know a lot of you guys like it and a few of you guys prefer when i have more whites i'm sorry to you guys uh but you're just gonna have to deal with it tonight so Anyways, I've, I've been taking some pictures with the Sony a7R II. For those of you who don't know, it's, it's a really nice camera. It's not really like a vlogging camera, but I'm going to be using it. I'm just waiting for my filters to come in. I got an orange and a yellow filter. I got these really cool adapters to be able to attach them to the camera. And it's just going to be super nice. I'm filming this right now on my phone in 60 FPS. And the reason that I do 60 FPS is just in case I want to do something slow-mo, number one. But number two, I'm doing this with just like a little tripod. It's not a gimbal or a camera stabilizer. Uh, so it, it really helps smooth out the picture. And I, I just like the way that it looks. If I shoot in 30 FPS Ultra HD, it, it just has a little bit different look to it. And it's almost like too blue. So I think this kind of helps balance it out too. I know if you're just shooting regular video, uh, you probably want to do 24 FPS. Uh, but that's a totally different subject. So let's get into the tank. Just a little update. So my most recent batch of coral came in, and I think it was in my last video too. But I got a few new trachees. I got this guy right here from Aqua SD. Doing really well. Really well. Let's see. Yeah, some of the colors in that are just stunningly beautiful. Then I got this one over here. I do have my macro lens on too, so I can hopefully get a little bit better zoom quality. It's still kind of hard to see the true colors in that. So I got them two guys. Then coming on over, I got this 24K chalice. That guy's pretty, pretty cool, looking pretty neat. Oh, that's kind of a cool shot. I like that. Cameras are so fascinating. That's the cotton candy torch in the background. And let's just slide on over to this middle orange guy here. That's an A-can. All these corals came from Aqua SD. That's pretty cool. Let's move up. Got this torch. This was like the replacement one that they sent me. Pretty sure it's an LA Lakers torch and it's a pretty good size. There's the gold torch that I got. It's being blown in the opposite direction right now. But uh, here's the, my LA Lakers torch. You can see the similarities. Uh, this maybe has a little bit lighter tips on it than 
this one so this might just be a gold torch with blue tips but it's looking really good see my little euphelia fragrant garden some pretty nice colors going on there <laughs> man this is just so beautiful for some reason that gold torch isn't popped all the way out but uh you know i don't I don't think that I say it enough. Okay, I do say it a lot, but it's because I really mean it. Like, this YouTube channel is all about your support. So, I just want to take a second and say thank you guys, first of all, for watching. And if you're just a continual watcher, but you haven't subscribed, I'm, I'm not even going to ask you to subscribe. I just, I appreciate you even watching. So, I'm just going to keep making videos. Maybe at some point you'll subscribe. If not, that's all right. I, I, you know, the views, <laughs> they're views. And each person that gets a view hopefully learns something or is entertained or just appreciates and enjoys this video. And at the end of it, that's what I really care about the most is that we just have a good time and appreciate this hobby, appreciate the coral, and hopefully be able to learn something from one another and that's that's what makes me feel the best honestly is when some of you just say thank you or that you learned something or that you got something out of it it really goes a long way with encouraging me to make more videos and over the last four months i've made a lot of videos i think on average i've been making one every like two to four days and sometimes i put out three or four three or four days in a row and it's just super cool. I love shooting video. And I love the ideas and recommendations that you guys give me. I appreciate it. So please, please keep it coming. Keep the views and keep the comments coming. The recommendations, even the critiques. Yes, I know some of you are going to say you want more whites. I know, and I'm sorry. But it's going to be blues tonight. So <laughs> I will be doing some more whites. And... To follow through on an older promise of mine, my dad has come out cancer-free. He's on the other side of it. He's completely cancer-free. So for those of you who don't know, they did a surgery on him, took out his kidney, and got all the cancer with it. So now he's, he's healing from the surgery. After he's done healing from the surgery, that's it. It's, it's done, and we're in the clear. So we're all very excited about that. And more good news to it for all of us is he's going to help continue to build the new tanks that we're setting up. And he actually already set up the RODI unit. So we got water uh, in the garage up at his house, and it's one from bulk reef supply I think it's like 200 gallons per day so it's a really nice unit and um, there was an issue with it at first but he figured it out got it worked out and uh, now we're just going to be setting up the plumbing on the tanks and I've actually started already working on editing the videos and putting the videos together so if you guys are at all interested in watching a video on how to build your own plywood aquarium Make sure you check out those videos. Make sure you look at it. And uh, it's there's just a lot of good information on it. Um, there's not going to be a whole lot of like ultra detailed stuff. But it's not that hard to figure out and put the pieces together. Um, and anybody can really do it. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper than if you were to go out and buy a huge glass aquarium. So these tanks are eight feet long by two feet tall by 28 inches front to back. So a little over two feet front to back. And they're just really cool tanks. I, I've always wanted, since I started this hobby, I've always wanted a big aquarium. This one's 120 gallons. It's a four feet, so it's four feet from side to side, two feet from bottom to top, and two feet from front to back. And so it's a 120 gallon tank. The sump down here is a 30 gallon sump. It's a Bashi 30 gallon sump. I've got 
Um, oh boy. The Aquamax DC Cone S2. Cone SQ2 skimmer, I believe it is. And this thing's just like a beast mode. We only got one filter suck in the back. And we even got a frag rack down in the sump here with some coral, some algae growing. And I'm just leaving the algae because it helps kind of suck up some of those extra nutrients. And I am still dosing nitrates about once a week. And then we got, uh, here, hold on one second. Then we've got our uh, dual reactor, GFO and carbon. Uh, I need to change the carbon. The GFO is on the far side. And I'm just, each time I change it, I'm putting less and less in there, so there's barely any in there right now. Here's my auto top off reservoir with my auto top off uh, reader thing there in the sensor is right there in the water there's a lot of nasty stuff on the glass so when i shut the this is something to think about for those of you guys who build your own systems when you shut off the the power for your tank and for your system if you have an overflow you can see the teeth let me show you from here you can see the teeth there so the teeth are actually underneath the water level a little bit. So when you shut off the power, the water actually drains to the bottom of the teeth. And sometimes it even continues to siphon through your tubes that pump water back into your tank. And all that water goes down into your sump. So when my water shuts off, the water fills up, fills up, fills up, and it fills up pretty high. So the bigger the tank that you have, the more water because of surface area is going to overflow into your sump and it's going to raise higher and higher. So depending on the water level of your sump, that's something that you really want to be careful for is because you can very easily over flood your sump really quickly. So that was an issue that we ran into with building our aquariums. We had to build a huge sump. Everything that we have we built except the frag tank. Um, we bought a four foot by two foot by six inch tall frag tank. Whew, I feel like I'm out of breath. But, uh, yeah, everything that we built, or that we have, we built except the frag tank. Even the sump. We built the sump that's like just under seven feet long. And it's 16 inches, or 18 inches front to back. And I think 18 inches tall. So it would be plenty big for... The, the big tank that we have and or one of the big tanks and the frag tank so if the power ever cut off and all the water siphoned back down into the sump it wouldn't overflow which is exactly what we want so yeah that's pretty cool side note look at that that's what I'm talking about that's pretty good camera quality right there for a cell phone? Yeah. <laughs> We're admiring algae together. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with me? You guys aren't enjoying that. But anyways, I'm enjoying this. I think you're enjoying it too. A lot of people have asked me about this mushroom. This one is not for sale. This one is. This guy, I mean, you can make an offer if you want, but uh, I prefer to grow it out. But if you offer a, a decent price for it, I'd probably sell it. Um, otherwise, I'm going to let it continue to grow out, and then I will probably frag it or put it in a spot where it might try to stretch its foot onto a nearby rock and reproduce. I've had really good success with mushrooms reproducing in this tank. You can see all my eclectus mushrooms, and they're kind of all over the place. There's some more here. There's some more there. You might have saw one or two more down in my sump. But uh, really cool. Everything's looking great. I'm not going to ramble on too much more. Uh, this is the Carolina Reaper Acro. It's probably my... In the top three favorite acros in this tank right now. This is the Walt Disney. It's always been a favorite of mine. It's the crown of my tank. 
That's why it sits right in the front and just kind of stands out big time. That's my Aqua SD Rainbow Millie. Really nice looking piece. The one right up front here, which if I could do a top down, you could see a little bit cooler color out of it. Uh, this is the Top Shelf Aquatics Bubble Yum Acropora. $1,200 for a small frag of that. Yes, I do think it's probably a little bit overpriced. Okay, it's a lot overpriced. You got me. This is the Circus Freak Acropora, $1,000 frag. That's the Miss Piggy Acropora, about a $400 frag. Uh, that's Voodoo Magic. All my acros, they keep coloring up slowly, but surely. This is the Haymaker. Another really, really cool one. This camera just doesn't... That's one thing about my cell phone is... It doesn't show these acros the way I would hope. Uh, they're just so beautiful in real life. But anyways, guys, this has kind of just been like an update rambling video. Thanks for watching. If you're still here with me now, I appreciate you. And thank you for not quitting on me. And I'm not going to quit on you. I'm going to keep making videos. I'm going to keep putting my experiences out there and, and try to help you guys, try to encourage you guys, and, and just be here to... You know, the more of us that are in the hobby that keep with it and don't quit, the more encouraging it is to each one of us to just keep going because we're not alone, right? And if I have any struggles or mishaps or bad things happen, I want to be able to share those because I know every day there's hundreds of reefers around the world who are experiencing difficulties in their reef tanks. And in those moments, it can be so depressing, especially if you're losing coral which means you're losing money. It can be so depressing and so hurtful. And in those moments, it's nice to know that you're not the only one that's going through it at the moment or that has ever gone through it before. So it's just cool to be doing this and, and to be part of this YouTube family. I appreciate you guys. And again, 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 if something happens, don't give up. Don't quit promise you if you stick with it and keep a good attitude you'll be stronger on the other side even if you have to spend some money even if you lose some money you're going to be stronger on the other side you're going to appreciate it more you're going to be so much more thankful in the end it's better to look back over the last 10 years and say man i had a tank crash i lost a lot of acros i lost a lot of coral but now my tank is doing well i've learned a lot it's doing better than it's ever done before than to look back over the last 10 years and say, oh, I had a few things go sideways and go sour, so I quit and gave up. But now I'm watching these other guys that have these really nice tanks, and they stuck with it, and I wish I would have stuck with it. And if I want to get back into it, now I'm going to have to spend even more money than I did before. So just don't give up. Don't quit, you guys. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video, hopefully with my new camera set up. Really looking forward to it. Aquatic Bob's out.